Cool. Hi, everyone. My name is Tukan. I am the CEO of LeadSef. Today, I have with me Carly Wark. Um, Carly is the VP of Marketing at Zimplify. Hi, Carly. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Tukan. Thanks. Cool. So today, we are, we are trying out something different. This is the first of hopefully many uh, in this new video series we are calling Driving Content with Intent. Um, the purpose of this uh, video series um, is basically we hear a lot of talk about people doing data-driven marketing. Um, now we are actually going to put it to test. And the way we are going to do it is you're going to basically feature a company every other week. This time it's, it's Zimplify. Uh, thank you for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to feature a company. We look at um, their marketing campaigns, uh, their event marketing strategies, and, and, and the kind of content they're creating right now. Uh, we look at the data. And then what we'll do is we'll take that as input and then look within LeadSift's intent stream and compare that with how their content topics, their marketing strategy, comparing with what their competitors are doing and what their potential buyers are doing. So hopefully this can provide insights to feed back into the marketing loop saying, you know, we might create content about these topics, uh, attend these events and things like that. So, the, the best part about this is, this is all live. Carly has no idea what we found out. So this will be a live reveal. I don't know how this will go, uh, but looking forward to this. So thank you for doing this, Carly. Um, before we go, go ahead, one thing that'll be helpful is if you want to give a quick high level overview of what Simplify does, that'll be great. Yeah. So thanks very much, Tukan. So Simplify is a marketing automation platform so we um everything that you need full end to end solution for all your marketing um basically launch all your multi-channel campaigns from one place and be able to track everything back in the the one the one place the one piece of software um so yeah nice and do you guys focus primarily on the european market or is it also the american market carly so it would be at the minute uh, the main focus would be yeah UK and Europe, but we really want to try and get get into the US. We have a couple of clients in the US and we have an office over in the US, so the it would certainly be a big focus for us within the next six, six, twelve, eighteen months to, to really break into the US more so. Awesome. Cool. All right. So let's 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 get started. So the first thing is um, these are the input parameters uh, that we we got from Simplify. I'll, I'll quickly go over them for the audience. So the input were a list of high level topics that, that Simplify has been creating content on recently. Uh, buyer intent data is, is a high level topic. Marketing automation, obviously. Uh, email marketing, inbound marketing, event marketing strategies, multi-channel and omni-channel marketing strategies. Those would be some of the high level topics that you guys are creating content on, correct? Carly? Yeah, that's right. And, and let me ask you this, um, other than putting content down, meaning blogs or, or eBooks, um, well, let me ask you this, is, is the content primarily in blog format or what other kind of content are you guys putting up for these topics? So we would do a lot of blogs and blogs would be really important for us obviously to try, try and drive people to our site. But we also, um, write loads of ebooks we write loads of guides and that can be used across a range of different channels so from email to social um, to ppc really got it got it so all your marketing not all a lot of your marketing strategy has been around these topics in the last little bit correct? yeah awesome that's right uh, in terms of your icp ideal customer profile i just want to make sure that i have it got it correct you're targeting companies between one to five hundred employees uh, or 10 to 500 employees, I should say. Um, you're focusing in the US and UK market and you're targeting senior sales and marketing professionals with this kind of content, correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Perfect. And then in terms of competitors, uh, you guys are in a pretty competitive landscape with marketing automation and, and I guess Instagram <laughs> PRM. So yeah. <laughs> we, have, we, we looked at Marketo, Active Campaign, Infusionsoft, HubSpot, Salesforce, and there's probably 80 more that we looked at. And I'm guessing there's more than 80. But, but that's, that's sort of the competitive landscape. That's pretty accurate? Yeah. Awesome. Right. So with that as the input, 
what we did was we basically took that as input. We went back in time and we analyzed the data. And for this experiment, what we did, Carly, was we looked at data for the month of August, from August 1 to September, uh, September 1. That's where we analyzed the data. And this is what are some of the things that we found. So the first thing that we found out was of your competitors, these were some of the key topics that your competitors were creating content on. So the number one topic that your competitors were creating content was CRM and a lot to do with CRM. Um, there was talk about email marketing, marketing automation, which is similar to what you guys are creating. So that's good. Uh, there were a couple yeah. interesting things we found. There were quite a bit of talk about customer experience and user experience. That was a very interesting mm -hmm. thing. I, 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 I was surprised with that. There was talk about GDPR, which makes sense, uh, compliance perspective. There was talk about small businesses. Given that fact that you, you are going after that kind of market, they are talking a lot about small business. And then SaaS. A lot of your competitors are going after SaaS market, um, which I think you probably knew. Personalization was also an interesting topic that we found out. A lot of these email marketing platforms are talking about personalization. What are, what are your thoughts, uh, Kari, looking at this? Does it make sense? Did it, any of this surprise you? Um, I don't think I'm massive. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised uh, the GDPR one because obviously that's something we talk about a lot over here. I didn't think so much because the competitors would mainly be, I would have thought, would have been US based and less concerned about GDPR, but there you go. That's, that's, that's an interesting um, an interesting takeaway. And then obviously the CRM one, I'm surprised it's that big. Yeah. Um, the number one topic, I'm really, really surprised at that. I would have thought the marketing automation would have been the number one topic oh. rather than CRM. Um, it's good that they're talking about email marketing, so we're covering that a yeah. little bit. But the the customer experience one as well, that's yeah. um, definitely something you know we should be writing more about. So that's, that's really good to know. And in fact, what, what we'll show later uh, there, Ali, is we actually... Uh, took a deeper analysis on each of those topics and we found some subtopics for CRM, GDPR and uh, customer experience. I think that will, the GDPR one, I think you'll, you'll, you'll know why GDPR showed up. Uh, even okay. though okay. So there's some very interesting insights there. So that's awesome. Okay. So moving on, these are the topics that what we found out your ICP was talking about, meaning not your competitors, but who you typically sell to, which is quite a bit different than what your competitors are putting out. Uh, or so content marketing was a big one. SaaS was common e-commerce PPC SEO were two big topics. Um, I know you guys are talking a lot about landing page inbound. So that's actually great. CRM is still there. It's not the top one. Uh, machine learning was an interesting one. Customer experience. This is a common theme. Um, so there is, I think there's definitely some trend there. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Something. Mm -hmm. uh, ABM, account based marketing, was something that showed up. Um, I know these are certain specific group of companies, the B2B marketers, they would be talking about it. So that was another topic that we showed that, that, that came through. One thing that I think that might skew the data between your competitors and the ICP topic engagement is we did not, we, we, we were looking at every single industry. So here there were some marketers that we ca captured engaging with content that were from, might be from larger brand or consumer facing brands. They care a lot about content marketing than email marketing automation because they're creating different kinds of content. So that's why content marketing is the number one thing in this case. Mm -hmm. um, nonetheless, some interesting insights, but this is where it gets really interesting. So looking at the subtopics, so we took some of those high level topics that your competitors are creating content on. Looking at the subtopic, CRM was a pretty big topic amongst your competitors, but it's not just generic CRM. Within CRM, they're talking about using terms like fully integrated CRM, complete CRM. Um, I know you guys fall under the bucket of all-in-one CRM. You do have some CRM capabilities. Some of the marketing automation yeah. are also playing in that space. Um, and when they talk about CRM, they include things like email and SMS marketing, website building. So it's, it's not CRM in your traditional sense as Salesforce, but it's more the fully integrated CRM, which does marketing automation and CRM sort of functionalities. Uh, so that was the interesting oh, yeah. thing. We talked about GDPR. 
So it, the thing was GDPR compliance people talked about, but then California is passing a new law. That's a new privacy law, which is similar to GDPR. A lot of yeah. competitors are US. So this applies to them. So that's why they're putting a lot of content about that. So if you are selling into the US market, I think you need to also touch on that, even though it doesn't apply to them that much. But uh, this California's new privacy, I forget what it's called exactly name, but people were associating that with GDPR. That's why they show up. Uh, uh, okay. Very interesting. Uh, email marketing, a lot of people talked about ROI, high volume email sending. They were talking about that, creating mm -hmm. content about that, um, which makes sense. Customer experience, this was very, very interesting. What we found was customer experiences, a lot of the talk was around customer retention, and there were specifically few pieces of content put out about marketing owning customer experience, the entire journey. Because wow. they're selling very much into marketing, how, so the marketing folks would love to read up or consume these kind of content now. Uh, I guess this yeah. is a hot topic. So that's interesting, and then, Couple things with regards to personalization and e-commerce. I think people are already starting to put content out about holiday season, which is which might be a bit premature, but who knows? There's a lot of talk about, this is not for B2B, I think. This is because a lot of, I'm guessing HubSpots or active campaigns, infusions of clients are B2C too. Um, and they're sending a lot of high volume emails, promote, using promotions for the holiday season. Uh, there's a lot of content going out right now about that. And they're tying that into personalization. There's a, there's a theme around using artificial intelligence to do personalized promotions so that you don't send the same yeah. promo offer. So there is something there. Um, what, did, did, that this, did this clarify some of the thoughts why GDPR showed up or why CRM was the number one thing? Yeah, it really does. It's, it's just amazing at the amount of like that, being able to get that insight into what our ICP are actually doing online yeah. and are actually looking for like that, that would, that's really going to affect um, in a really positive way our content strategy for, yeah. you know, this, like, because that's what we're looking for now, obviously, it's the start of the month, we're looking to drive our, you know, like, what's our content for October, what's our strategy. So now I'm thinking of all the topics that we have to take out and there we have go. to start writing about. So that's, that's great. Awesome. Cool. That, yeah. and that's the whole goal is we want it to be data driven. Looking at your competitors, looking at your buyers, and there's, then reverse engineer what they're con consuming and write content about that. So that's awesome. So moving on, so this is, I think you will find it pretty interesting. The other thing we looked at was your competitors. Event marketing is a pretty big part of a marketing strategy for a lot of these marketing automation companies. And one of the things we saw was what are the events they are sponsoring? Uh, and there are some few interesting insights. So, um, Event Marketer Summit is a big one. Forrester Customer Experience. Um, HubSpot Inbound, obviously. Marketo Summit, Drift Hypergrowth. Those were pretty obvious ones. There are three interesting ones that I thought were super interesting. Love to hear your thoughts. Etail East was a big conference that a lot of your competitors actually attended. Um, this is very much for retail brands. So if you're selling into uh, B2C companies, the online retailers or physical retailers, this was the spot. A lot of your competitors were going. Uh, the two other one was SaaS Talk. SaaS Talk is actually an event that is happening in Ireland uh, in two yeah. weeks' time. Are you guys going there? We, uh, yeah, yeah, we will be. Yeah, we'll be attending. Yeah. Amazing, because a ton of your ICP and your competitors are going to be there. So that's, that's spot on. Gainsight Pulse. I don't know if you know of this. So Gainsight is a customer success platform. It is the largest customer success platform right now. They have started this whole idea of customer success. They host their annual event in, I think, end of July or August. It is targeted very much to SaaS companies. A ton of your competitors attended that event. And a lot of your ICP was talking about it. A lot of, and I think there could be a very interesting ex connection done between customer experience marketing owning the whole customer retention journey mm -hmm. uh, them going to gain sight makes a lot of sense so that's one of the interesting things that i thought was you know when as if you are a marketer you think of the hubspot inbounds and the marketo summits of the world mm -hmm. but your prospects or your competitors are, are sort of diverging they're looking at the auxiliary market um, so there's uh, i thought that was pretty interesting yeah um, for sure 
So yeah, hopefully SaaS stock is a super uh, successful one because a lot, the data says a lot of your target market is going to be there. So that's great. Um, <laughs> John, you, 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 you can pre-validate your investment on SaaS stock. Let's hopefully, hopefully after the event, it makes sense too. So now let's look at the ICP. So this is, this is brilliant actually. Looking at your ICP, a lot of your ICP attends the Salesforce World Tour. So Salesforce has their big event, which is a Dreamforce, but every month they have these world tour events in different cities. A lot of your target market attends that. And some of your competitors also sponsors it, but your target market definitely attends the Salesforce world tour. So if there's a Salesforce world tour happening somewhere in London, I think your, mm -hmm. you guys' strategy should be being there. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. one. Digi publish. So this is Digi Day's big publisher summit. That's one of the things. HubSpot, Inbound, obviously. SaaS Talk, again, shows up. Forrester Customer Experience. Forrester holds their Customer Experience Summit. A lot of marketers are, are paying attention to it. So, and also CX and Customer Experience and User Experience being a trending topic showing up. I think there is a, some merit to that. Content Marketing mm -hmm. World, which is a big content marketing conference. That happened, I think, early September. Uh, a ton of the marketers, inbound marketers, they were attending that event. Um, so that would be another one. B2B SMX, I think SMX stands for Sales and Marketing Exchange. Um, so that happened in June. That was also an event a lot of B2B marketers were going and salespeople were going in that size of 10 to 500 employees. So mm -hmm. those would be some of the events that I would pay closer attention to. Uh, the best part is some of them you can go, some of them you don't need to go. You can track them in lead sift and figure out who the people are. Yep. So, so those would be some good intels. And that's, that's all I had, uh, Carly, from, from an insights perspective. I'd love your thoughts. I know you talked about the ICP, you know, the, the, the topics from an event strategy. How do you see, you know, potentially as the head of marketing, leveraging some of this data? Really, 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 really do because it's around this time of year that we start to think about our event strategy for next year so we can start getting budget sorted and start to get geared up for next year. So there's some of those events there that I, I'll be honest, I haven't even heard of. Um, so I'm really glad that we are going to SAS Talk and we'll, and we'll be there. We'll, we'll have a presence there. So that's good, but that's good to know that in advance. Yeah. Um, and obviously for some of those events that um, you know, maybe we wouldn't be able to go to or, you know, don't fit within our budget so much, but it's good that, you know, obviously we can usually just to track. Um, but yes, yeah, for some of those other ones, it, for sure, that'll, that'll really affect what, what we're going to do because I'm going to go and research them now and, awesome. and check out how much it's going to be to go because, yeah, events are really important to us and they're a really important way that we can generate leads and create, obviously, because we're, we're relatively new still in the market. And as you've mentioned, Chica, we're you know, we've, we're in a very competitive market that's very saturated. So we have to try and create some bra as much brand awareness as we can. So events are really critical to us for that. So this is really, it's really, really, really interesting and really, 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 really valuable to, to be able to know this, know what, who, where our competitors are and, um, you know, our ICP, where are they, what are they attending? So this is really, really, really valuable data. Awesome. So what I'm going to do, uh, Carly, is after this, I'll, I'll send it over this, this slide to you so that you have it and you can use it to plan. One, one interesting experiment to run would be after you take some of these insights and create some content on for this quarter, maybe do a recap end of the year and see what kind of yeah. performance gain we got from a demand gen traffic conversion perspective. Because if it is, the thesis is, if you're creating content that your competitors are creating on and your buyers are caring about, more of them will come, more of them will convert. That'll be a very interesting exactly. experiment to run. But I'm glad that this was helpful. So thank you again so much for agreeing to be part of it. Uh, and uh, I'll share this and uh, hopefully this was useful. So until then, uh, we'll... That's great. Thank yeah. you so much. Awesome.